Hey everybody, it's me Stacy here at Scrapbooking Made Simple and it's time for our next Saturday with Stacy YouTube class number 287 and this is a doozy. <laughs> I mean it's really a doozy. <laughs> I will tell you, I saw something somewhere, I can't tell you where, but I saw something in a DIY type of catalogy place. And I was like, oh, I have to YouTube this. I have to YouTube this. So I made a few phone calls and got in touch with a few people and found out that the materials it took to do what I saw were like, oh. <laughs> I had no idea that there was such a thing as couture DIY, <laughs> but apparently there is something, something like a couture DIY. Oh my gosh, I thought I have to figure out a way to make this work with products that we can all afford. <laughs> so, got on the phone, made a few phone calls, talked to a few people, brought in some product that would not normally, you would not normally see in a, a crafting, scrapbooking, card making store, a paper crafting store like us, but because it came from a little bit outside of our industry, not totally outside of our industry, the price was amazing. It's not couture, <laughs> but it's affordable and nobody needs to know that it wasn't couture. Don't tell them, whatever. <laughs> So I have got product from Yasutomo, which is known in the industry for their uh, products from Japan. We did their, their beautiful papers and they, they just have some lovely things. And I have something from them that I was shocked at the price. I mean, it takes a lot to surprise me. It really does. I've seen a lot in this industry over the past 16, 17 years. The price was like wahoo ka -choo. And then Prima stepped in with some products, some stencils that are amazing. And then a customer came up to me and you know who you are too. I was sitting at my demo table. I can't remember if it was on a Saturday. And she came up and she said, are you going to do the Tim Holtz shifter stencils? And I'm like, no. <laughs> she asked, are you going to YouTube them? And I'm like, no, we carry them, but I'm not going to YouTube them. She's like, why? And I'm like, well, because nobody does Tim's product better than Tim. <laughs> I mean, he does an amazing job. And so he should, he developed it and designed it and conceptualized it and, and knew what he wanted it to be. So I don't, I, I don't know that I had anything to bring to shifters stencils, but when it turned out we were gonna do the Prima stencils for this YouTube, I thought, okay, well, she asked for shifters. I said, I'll, 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 I'll throw them in this YouTube as well because maybe you all, I can't believe this, but maybe some of you don't follow Tim Holtz. <laughs> maybe, or maybe you just didn't have a chance to watch his YouTube, or I, I don't know, but we're gonna play with his shifter stencils. We're gonna play with stencils from Prima. I, I have got beautiful product for you and so many different ways to use it. And at a price point that is stellar. In fact, Prima has to be commended for the price point because when I told them I wanted to do the stencils, they gave them to me at a price where we can give them to you at 40% off during this YouTube. I know, crazy, right? So most of them are about $5 a stencil and they last forever. You never throw them away. So $5 less 40%, that means the stencils are now $3. Some of them are at $4 and then 40% off, some of them are at $6 and then 40% off. Between that and the price on the Yasutomo product, 20 bucks and you're gonna have a, you're gonna have a, great, a great play day when you get your order, oh my gosh. Seriously, 20 bucks is gonna get you a few things. Amazing, amazing. I have product from Sizzix to show you, so I'm excited about that. But if it wasn't for that nice customer who said, are you gonna do the shifters? I was like, well, I suppose I can. So we've got, we're going to start at the very beginning, basics of stencils. And if you're not a stencil person, wait. You may see you may see a technique or something that you didn't know about stencils or how to utilize them in your scrapbooks or your layouts or your your mini albums or your cards. They're not just for mixed media and altered art. Really they're not. And because they are affordable, they're a tool that you can go back and use Oh, I almost thought that there was going to be an accident. <laughs> I 
was waiting for that. Okay, I'm glad there wasn't. <laughs> I don't know what I was saying now. Oh, you can go back and use them again and again and again, kind of like a die and embossing folder. You have to look at stencils as a tool because that's what it is. And what you do with it is up to you. But I think when you see all the different ways I'm going to use stencils today, you'll agree. It's a tool that's very affordable and with lots and lots of options. <laughs> okay, we have winner, winner, chicken dinner to talk about. That was on YouTube number two, 286. <laughs> and it was the Find It exclusive Find It dot and do kits that are from, well, the Find It trading that are in from Holland. And they were beautiful and they're amazing and they're exclusive. And the only place you're going to find those kits are us. And they too are wonderfully affordable. And then those dies, the three dies that made the card bases. Oh, again, great product. So I've got two winner winner chicken dinners and you are going to be winning a dot and do pack and glitter paper to go a couple well you're getting apple green and lilac glitter paper it looks like wahoo could chew for you all right so who's our first winner winner chicken dinner della hello della is that your name della clough della you're a winner chicken dinner you're a winner chicken dinner wahoo you for you but you're not alone we always have two winners per YouTube so who's our next winner how about Renee Renee Cassidy hello Renee how are you doing <gasps> you're a winner chicken dinner wahoo cut you you're a winner chicken dinner I feel like I'm back in the 80s you know vacation you know well anyway that was the go-go yeah, the, the, yeah, the Go-Go's. Anyway, that was back in the 80s. <laughs> All right, girls, how are you going to claim your prize? It's so easy. Go to scrapbookingmadesimple.com. Look for the link that says winner, winner, chicken dinner. Click on the link, follow the directions, and we'll get your prizes out to you just as quickly as possible. Now remember, you have 30 days from the original air date of this YouTube to claim your prize. And if you don't, they go in the land of misfit prizes. And we use all of those unclaimed prizes for our anniversary sale, 100 prize winner winner chicken dinners. So don't do that. Claim your prize. We want to send it to you. <laughs> okay. Also, the shop that did not hop will be wrapped up by the end of March. It could be wrapped up sooner than that, but I'm estimating the end of March. If you have yet to pay your invoice, all invoices have been sent, please pay it. <laughs> I would greatly appreciate it. There is approximately 300 invoices that have not been paid. That's a lot of invoices. That's a lot of product that we went ahead and we paid for in good faith with the anticipation that when you checked out as a pay later, you would pay for it. So please, please don't, don't not pay for it because then it jeopardizes all those other wonderful people who did pay for their orders when their invoices were sent. If you have a question, if you have concerns, just give us a call. We'll do our best to work with you. But we, we gave you since July of last year to save up for your purchase. And I would so greatly appreciate it if you could now take care of those invoices. I've already bought the product for you. Okay. That also means that the Spellbinder warehouse sale is going to roll right in after. So if you have a pay later from the Spellbinders warehouse sale day one, I'm thinking you'll see your invoices sometime in April. So this is your heads up to start saving for that. <laughs> 300 invoices. Okay. So today, today we have an amazing YouTube for you. I am so very excited. I have a free gift from Prima for all of you. And it doesn't make a difference if you buy, if you order something from this YouTube, awesome. You're going to get a free gift. If you just need some Stacy tape, awesome. You're going to get a free gift. If there, there was a Inky Antics or an Arkham Wild or a Darcy's stamp that you wanted, Awesome, you're gonna get a free gift. If you needed some tweezers or some cutting plates from Sizzix, 
awesome you're going to get a free gift every order placed during the for the during this youtube time frame from saturday till friday when the youtube comes down the free gifts go away but as long as you place an order during this the first week of this youtube when this youtube yummy sale is active doesn't matter what you order you're going to get a free gift from prima Woo! and that includes all of you online in-store people in-store people also are going to get a free gift no matter what you come into the store and buy you need one sheet of black cardstock you're going to get a free gift so i actually get to say and you get a free gift 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 and if you place multiple orders, let's say you order something today and then you come back on Thursday, well, guess what? As long as we have the free gifts, you're gonna get another free gift. And if you're shopping in store and you come in on a Saturday, the Saturday, and then you come back on a Thursday, and again, you just buy one sheet of black cardstock, okay, we're happy you came in to buy that one sheet of black cardstock and you get a free gift. We're gonna give them out until we have no more left. So hopefully they're all gone during this YouTube. And a big thank you to Prima for their support of Scrapbooking Made Simple. Palm called me, she said, would you like these? And I'm like, well, yeah. <laughs> and usually, I think she thought we would put them out for sale, but we never do. If a manufacturer gives us something for free, we give it away. We never take anything they send us at, 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 and, and, and put it out for sale ever if we've been given it we're going to pay it forward to you so okay I have got a lot to do today a lot to show you stay with me I think you're gonna love it all we're gonna start very very simple and we're gonna gradually get a little bit more difficult and a lot of technique a lot of technique and the Prima stencils are on sale at 40% off the Tim Holtz are on sale for 20% off the Yasutomo's on sale for 20% off. So I think you'll find that, that you'll be able to um, get a lot of bang for your buck on this one. Okay, down we go. Are we ready? I think so. Down we go. Wahoo could shoot. Goodbye, everybody. It's good to see you. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. Okay, now I have to zoom on in. Zoom, zoom on in. So the zoom button is right next to the um, don't record button anymore. And I'm always so worried I'm going to accidentally hit that. All right. I think that's pretty good. Do you think that's pretty good? I think so. Can I take it just up a little bit? No, down a little bit. All right. So downstairs, we have our free in-store make and take going on. And this is one of the cards that they can make. We gave them lots of different backgrounds and lots of different stencils to play with. But I want you to take note of two things one the background and two the shimmer see the background can you see the the dots on the background so this is one of the cards that they could make but every card's going to be different because we gave them all sorts of different stuff to play with then we have it in the pink and i want you to see the background can you see the background here can you see the shimmer there so pretty they could be making something that looks like this, or they could be making something that looks like this. And again, see the background and see the shimmer. So we're gonna get to this, and I'm gonna take you through the steps of what we did to get here and show you product, like I said, that you may not have seen before. So I'm super excited about that. Let's start at the very beginning. And I'm gonna start with Sizzix right now. And you're like, but Stacy, you didn't mention anything about Sizzix, not really. I know. All right, Sizzix. These are their sticky grid sheets. Now I have to tell you, I've known about these probably for a year and a half. I saw them, gosh, I saw them when they were in prototype form. These are from Sizzix. They're meant to go with your Sizzix Big Shot machine. And you're like, but what are you gonna do with them? What they're really meant to do, and the point of them, is that, okay, so you know when you have your magnetic platform and you put your little die on your magnetic platform and it goes zoop or zoop because it's got all the magnets in that magnetic platform and it's such a small little die that it wants to, it wants to go to where that magnet is. Sticky grids were developed to lay on top of your magnetic platform and so when you put your die down, it doesn't move. It doesn't go zoop zoop 
So that's where the sticky part comes in. The grid part comes in that they went ahead and they put grid. So you can line up your words perfectly. You can line up inside dies perfectly. And we're going to talk more about sticky grid because I'm going to be doing another do's and don'ts of the Sizzix Big Shot machine. There's so many new tools. There's so much new to it that, that it's time to do another do's and don'ts of the Big Shot machine. And we'll talk more about sticky grid then. But I am going to use it today. It comes in two sizes. So you have the large size that will fit right onto your magnetic platform or a smaller size, which um, gives you a little bit smaller piece to work with if you don't need something as large. You get five sheets here and five sheets here, and yes, they're on sale. But how do you use it and what are we gonna use it for? We're not gonna be using it to die cut at all. First thing I wanna tell you, it's difficult to get off. You have to look for the side that's open. Open, open, open. If you don't look for the side, that's open and you try and peel it from the side that is not. Okay, frustrating. <laughs> so just go to the side that has it open and that way you see you can peel it very easily. What is it? Imagine yourself a double-sided post-it note. Yes, a double-sided post-it note, so sticky on both sides top and bottom, but not so sticky that it's going to ruin your paper or um, ruin your dies or your mats or anything. And reusable again and again and again. So I'm not going to throw away the two liner sheets. I'm actually going to keep this because when I'm done today, I'm going to put it right back over the top and I'm gonna save this because as long as it's still sticky on both sides, I can still get use out of it. So I've peeled off one side, now I'm going to peel off the next. And again, I'm going to keep this because when I'm done with it, I'm going to put it right back on what they call the carrier or the liner so I can save this sheet and use it again and again and again. Now, you can see it sticks to my craft mat, my non-stick craft mat, because it is just a glorified double-sided post-it note that has grids in it. Easily to put down, easily to pick up. And when you put paper on it, again, it doesn't harm your paper. It doesn't tear your paper. Now, if you have really super, super thin paper, be a little ginger with it. Be a little more careful, but if you're using basic double-sided paper or cardstock, easy peasy. And you're like, okay, we get the point, but what are you gonna do with it? Well, the first thing we're gonna start with is our stencil from Prima. And this is one of the stencils that we have in. We have quite a few of them, and again, it's 40% off. But what is a stencil? Well, this is plastic that has been laser cut with a design in it. Can you see that design? laser cut with a design in it. And if you're a girl of the 70s or 80s, you may have stenciled your walls. <laughs> so when you look at stencils, you have to think of them as a tool because that's what they are. They last forever. You don't ever have to throw them away. They're very much like a die or a stamp or an embossing folder where you can use them again and again and again for different purposes. But the beautiful thing about having the sticky grid is that your stencil normally would go down on your craft mat and then you would want to tape it down so it doesn't move because it does move and the thing about a stencil is you can't have it move once you start coloring once you start doing your color because you're not going to be able to line it up very easily so it's got to stay in place so a lot of people will tape it down with with a painter's tape or washi tape the sticky grid gets rid of all of that for you. You just put your sticky grid down. I don't know, do I want it that way? Do I want it that way? Maybe we'll do it that way. Put your stencil right over the top of it. And now your stencil's going to stick right to your sticky grid. See, no movement. And because it's a non-slip craft mat, two, no movement. Everything stays put. Pretty rock star, right? 
not what Sticky Grid was intended for, but absolutely is fabulous with Sticky Grid. And I can use it again and again and again and again and again. Now, how am I going to stencil this? Well, instead of using color to begin with, and I think maybe I'll lower this just a little bit. Instead of using color to lower uh, to, to do this one, I'm going to start with the easiest thing ever, which is a Versamark pad. What's a Versamark pad? It is a it's a water stamp pad, a water marking stamp pad, but most often we use Versamark when we are going to do heat embossing with, with our heat tool. Ooh, I'm not going to do heat embossing today, but with our heat tool. Normally, we will ink our stamp up with this, stamp our stamp down, throw embossing powder down, and then heat until that um, powder becomes a solid. Most people have Versamark for that. What most people don't realize is that Versamark makes a beautiful tone on tone image. What do I mean by that? Well, so if you were, maybe I will do it this way. I can't decide. If you were doing anything that had a watermark, have you ever seen those images online where they've put a watermark of the brand name over the top of the image so you you can't um, take the image and use it without you know seeing who made it what manufacturer made it well that's kind of what a, a versamark does to paper it takes the paper and it darkens it where the versamark has been applied but because it's tone on tone because the versamark has absolutely no color to it whatsoever it is the same hue as the paper that you started with because all you're adding is a clear to it that's going to darken that paper up. I know it's a little, a little confusing, but let me show you. So I've got my Versamark and you can see that my pad is pretty yucky. I can hear Doris already going, ah. <laughs> Mine's got embossing powder mixed in it and maybe some glitter from other things. It's okay. It's all right, it's still good to use. I'm gonna take my Versamark and I'm gonna go right over, right over my stencil. Okay, then I'm gonna take a makeup sponge and you can absolutely use a dauber if you want. If you have a finger dauber and you wanna get in there and finger daub it, you go right ahead. I'm going to just use a makeup sponge. And if you press hard enough, you really don't even need to do this. But I just like to make sure that I've got every area covered with my Versamark. So I'm just going to daub that right on in. And the makeup sponges are very inexpensive. They're from Walmart. You get 50 for like $4.99. And you don't feel bad if you throw it away when you're all done with your craft. But I just want to make sure that all that Versamark is pressed in there really good. And you can see it's not moving. M my my um, sticky grid is keeping my stencil from going everywhere. Okay, then if I want, I can kind of peel back and see what I have. And if I'm not happy with it, I can lay it back down and I can add some more. All right, so I'm gonna assume that that's beautiful and that I'm in love, love, love with it. So I'm gonna peel my mask back, peel my paper off, and you can see where it's been watermarked. So it doesn't, it doesn't change the paper, it adds to the paper. You don't have to worry about having a pink ink that's going to match this paper perfectly and give you that darker image. You just have to use your watermark. It is a tone on tone look. And it's soft and it's subtle and it works so well when you need just a little extra something if you're doing a layout and you're working on a mat and you just need a little you need a little decoration around the mat but you don't want it to be patterned paper or 
um, you, 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 just, you, you just need a little bit of depth to that page. And the best way, the easiest way, look at that. Look at how simple that is. And when it dries, can you see that we did it on the bottom of this? It's on the mat for this card. It's the same stencil, but there it is. And we just did the whole mat. So it just added a little bit. And I didn't have to worry about having a dark orange ink pad. I didn't have to worry at all. The Versamark took that watermark and added it to my orange. It, it deepened that cardstock. It enhanced that cardstock by just putting that watermark on its original color and saturating it a little bit more so it kind of looks wet. Well, it looks like I stamped with a darker ink, but I didn't. Tone on tone stamping done with Versamark. And beautiful. I don't know if I can get this one close enough for you to see it. I can't get that one close enough for you to see it. Easy peasy. Now, if you want, you can take your heat tool and you can dry this, or you can just let it set to the side and come back to it later. You could also, if you really wanted to right now, throw embossing powder down and heat emboss it because that's what Versamark also does. But easy way to use a stencil that maybe you didn't know about was just doing a simple watermark. Now, let's move on to something a little bit more. Let's take another stencil. And this time, let's use color with it. Still got my sticky grid. Straighten it out. Still got my sticky grid. This time I'm gonna use some white paper. Just some white paper. Put it right down on my sticky grid. I've got my next Prima stencil. Put it right on top. Push it down. It's not moving. So this doesn't move because this is a non-stick, non-slip craft mat. I was the first in the industry to come out with it. <laughs> Then I got knocked off, but that's okay. It is the highest form of flattery. <laughs> I'm good with it. <laughs> Truly I am. Um, so nothing is moving. I've got my paper underneath. Now I'm gonna start with just one color. I'm gonna do just a basic stencil. I've got my little, my little dauber and again, if you wanted, you could use a makeup sponge for this to do, or to do this. I'm going to use my little dauber. I'm using my Memento inks because I own them. What ink do you already own? Do you have Stampin' Up? Do you have Lompon? Do you have Memento? Do you have Prima? Do you have Hero Arts? What inks do you own? Use them and you don't have to be consistent without the brand. If I own these two of Memento and then I have a red of Stampin' Up and then I have an orange of Lompon, use them all together, it's okay. It's all right. You want to pick the colors that make you happy, not necessarily the manufacturer when you're doing this. So I'm going to, on my dauber, find my paper because <laughs> it's white against white, and I'm just going to go in and I'm just going to stencil. Now, some people will say that you can just go straight to it, and you can. You're going to have a little less control over how much color you add. If you take your, um, your ink pad and go straight to it, it's going to apply maybe a little bit more than you wanted. So I like to use the dauber or a makeup sponge because then if I want to go back and make it darker, I can. If I want to keep it lighter in some areas, I can. I have options and you guys know me, I'm all about options. So I would rather take an extra minute or two and do this with my, with my finger dauber so that I can see exactly what I'm getting exactly where. Now I'm not going to do the whole thing. I just want to get some on here so you can see. And I might be, I might be um, stenciling my sticky grid at this point because I can't see where my white paper starts and stops. Gosh, Sizzix, do you think you could do sticky grid paper and maybe 
maybe another color, a darker color, so that white paper doesn't just kind of disappear against it. All right, let's see what I've got. Okay. So I've started to stencil. Very easy. It looks great as a background. It allows you to make your own backgrounds, especially if you're using a specific color stamped image. If you're stamping and you want your background matte to match the ink that you're stamping with or to be the same color as your stamped sentiment, this is an awesome way to make that happen. But what if we wanted to do something more than just one color? I'm not even going to try to line this up. I'm just going to start again. Not even going to try to line it up. This time I'm going to take my yellow because I like to start with my yellow. Get in there and I'm literally just going to put some yellow here and some yellow there with haphazard abandonment with with I won't want to say reckless abandonment but with Oh, with creative abandonment, I'm just going to let it go. So I'm not being precise about where I'm putting my yellow. I'm just getting some yellow here, some yellow there. I'm just not, I'm not putting it all over in the same place. I'm not putting it at the same intensity. I'm just getting it in there and I'm leaving some negative space, some white space. So I don't want everything to be yellow. Why? Because then I'm going to go grab my orange and I'm going to come in here and I'm going to add some orange on top of some of that yellow and fill in where some of that white space is. And just add some more color to it. Now I'm not using Tim Holtz Distress Inks. You absolutely can use your Distress Inks. I'm using what I have. And if you've got four Distress Inks and a couple Oxide Inks and a couple Memento Inks, well, pick the colors that make your heart happy that you're trying to accomplish. And regardless of who makes the ink, just go. And remember, I'm only working on white paper. Okay, enough orange. Now I'm going to go back to my pink and over the top I'm going to add a little bit of pink. Have no idea what we're going to get. So now I'm just adding a little bit of pink everywhere and again I'm just randomly putting it. I'm not thinking about it. I'm just letting my finger go and put some of this ink down. So what do we think? Here is where we are so far. And then the very last thing I'm going to do, and can you see how I'm able to pick it up and put it right back down? That's the sticky grid. I'm going to do one more time with my yellow. And now with my yellow, I'm just going to kind of come back and cover the whole thing in yellow just to blend all those colors together. See if I missed a space anywhere. I'm just going to come right back over with my yellow. And maybe a touch of pink there and there. Okay, stop, Stacy. All right, now let's see what we have. So instead of it just being plain pink, now I've got a beautiful blend of colors that I can now use as a background on my layouts, on my scrapbooking pages, on my um, little mini albums, on my calendar bases, on my cards. What is it that you create? 
because now you've made it yourself. You started with a piece of blank white paper. You used inks you already own and you bought a couple stencils at 40% off. That gives you the, the value to take the fear away of buying them. I think that's probably one of the most important things to me is that the reason I was so thankful that Prima gave them to us at that price is because if this is a $3 stencil, that doesn't scare you to buy it so that you can try it. It's not a $10 stencil. It's not even a $5 stencil. You can, you can buy it and you've got white paper. You do. You have white paper and you have inks. So now this gives you the opportunity at a price where you're like, okay, Maybe I will play just a little bit. For that price, if I don't love, love, love it, I can certainly give it to somebody else or put it away. But what if you do love it? And it, it takes that fear factor away of, I've got a limited craft budget. I, I, I want to spend it on things that I think are going to work for me. But if you don't ever try, you don't know if they're going to work for you. So... Thanks to Prima, we're able to bring you the stencils at a price that I think will make it um, easier for you to want to try. I, I don't want you to spend $20 on four stencils, but if you could get four stencils for $12, <laughs> maybe maybe that's something that you could think about or would think about or if you if they're four dollars each if you buy the four dollar ones and they're 20 percent off that's three dollars and twenty cents three dollars and twenty cents um so you could get three stencils for ten bucks and and that's not so scary that's not such a big risk of of your investment that if you decide it's not for you heck if you decide it's not for you take your alcohol inks color these cut them up and use them as part of a card <laughs> You have options. <laughs> okay, so that's just basic stenciling. I did, I did watermarking. Water, oh, it's drawing watermarking. And I did just a straight stencil and then I blended color. But then there are other types of stencils. And this is one of them. What does this do? All right, well, let's, let's play, let me show you. I'm gonna grab a piece of paper. I'm gonna put it right down on my sticky grid. In fact, I think I can use, I can use a smaller piece. I don't need this big thing. You can see I've inked on it. Okay, if that really bothers you, you can turn it over and use the other side. I don't care, as long as it's sticky, I'm a happy girl. Pull it up just a little bit. As long as it's sticky, I'm a happy girl. I've got my paper. I've got my stencil. Now this stencil has a background, a shadow, and a detail. How do I use this? Oh, easy peasy. So I'm gonna put it kind of on an angle because if I do it here, I wanna make sure that I have enough sticky up top. So I'm gonna do it kind of at an angle so that I'm sure it's stuck. Nothing's moving, very important. And of course, you know me, I'm gonna start with my yellow cause that's the kind of girl I am. And I'm just gonna go in and I'm gonna fill this whole space in with yellow. Yellow, yellow, yellow. And because it's down with a sticky grid, it's not moving anywhere. I didn't have to tape it down. I'm not worried that if it kind of goes, eh, it's like, oh my gosh, now I have to reline up the whole thing. I think that for stencils, that may be one of the reasons people kind of shy away from them is because they're, if you move it in the middle of stenciling, well, it's a happy accident and you'll make it better. But if you are more of a perfectionist, then it kind of, you get a little dismayed. Okay, so I've got some yellow, and it's not its not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. I've got some darker areas and some lighter areas. I'm okay with that. Then I'm gonna bring back in my orange. And I'm gonna add some orange around the tips. I 
I'm going to add some orange for a little bit of depth. And all I'm on is white paper. It almost looks like a sun. You could almost draw a happy face in there and make this a sun. So I added a little bit of orange just for some depth. Okay, now pull it off and there it is. Like I said, kind of looks like a sun. You could almost draw a little face in there and have a little sun, but I'm not done. That stencil has a detail stencil to it to add the finishing touch, which is this piece right here. I have to lay it over the top, so I've got to line it up. And that should be fairly easy to do because you can see the ink through it. Press it down so that it's stuck to my sticky grid. And then let's grab, let's grab red. And let's see what we get with red. Now we do sell the daubers, yes. They're very inexpensive. We sell 20, uh, 20 of them, 20 of them in a pack open, you know, where it's just in a pack for $9.99. And nobody does it for that price. This I am sure. Then we also sell them in this little case here where you get 40 of them in a little case for $23.99. And again, I think that's better than anybody's price out there. Okay, so I took my red and now I'm gonna go in right over the top. Right over the top. Now, is it perfectly lined up? I have no idea. Is it gonna be okay if it's not? Yes, of course it is. I just wanna get my red ink in there. Everywhere that the stencil has an opening. And some of it can be a little bit heavier, some of it can be a little bit lighter doesn't have to be consistent. You want that dimension in your finished product. You, you don't want all your colors to be the exact same intensity throughout your whole project. It's that different intensity in those colors that you're laying down that adds that dimension to where it's like, oh my gosh, did that really start as white paper? Well, yeah, you don't want it to look flat. You want it to look like it's got some dimension. Okay, what do we think? That looks pretty good. And again, let me pick it up so you can see that it is certainly not consistent in color. So I've got some lighter, I've got some darker. Let's see what we get. Bam. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> okay. What do you think? Right? Hello? <laughs> Is that beautiful? Oh my gosh. Now, mat this, uh, mat this against some paper. Put a little stem coming off of here. Put a little sentiment up there. Um, beautiful. And it started as white paper and you used inks you probably already own. All you did was utilize a stencil. I mean, that's absolutely gorgeous. And I used three color inks. I guarantee you, you must have, you must have three colors of ink. Look at how beautiful that is. Now, if you really wanted to, and I will not, you could fussy cut. No, there are no dyes to go around it. You, you can fussy cut it out if you really, really want to but that is a little bit of happiness. So we've done watermarking, we have done plain stenciling, we've done blending, we've done layer stenciling. I mean, this is a lot that maybe you didn't realize a stencil could do. And they're so pretty. I wanna do this one so badly, but I can already tell that this is gonna be really, really, really long. Okay, but super quick, right? What's it gonna hurt? But what if it doesn't, well, I don't know, we'll see. Let's try a different color. Um, okay, 
so I like my yellow because I'm a yellow girl. So I'm just going to do this one super fast just because I haven't seen this one yet. So I'll be super quick about it, I promise. It's like a surprise when it comes out. And when we share the surprise together, it's just a little bit of happiness. And sometimes it comes out and it's like, eh, or I make a mistake and that's good too because then you see that mistakes happen. And because these YouTubes are not edited, okay, so there's that. I'm gonna do a little bit of green. Oh, I didn't grab a green? How could I not grab a green? Is there any green left on this guy? A little bit of green left. A little bit of green. How could I not grab a green? Okay, now I wanna take the decorator piece that goes over it. And I'm not even gonna do a third color. I'm just gonna do two, because I, I wanna see what it's gonna look like. And I'm gonna lay it over the top and line it up. I think that's pretty close. And what if I took my blue? I don't know. How do we feel about blue? Should be quite the contrast, I would think. And I'm just gonna dab it in there. Of course, I could make green. Dab it in there. And then maybe I'll take a little different blue to give a little bit more dimension to it. Just dab, dab, dab. And let's take a little bit of a, let's do a little bit of a darker blue maybe. And just around maybe the outside of some of these have no idea. And maybe the center. Okay, let's see, that was super quick. Oh, but it's so pretty. They're just beautiful. Love, love, love it. And you could have gone back with three, do the background with more color to it so you have that blend. I should have gone over the whole thing with yellow, but it's beautiful. Love, love, love. And this one has the little bud to go with it. Yep, okay. So, layering stencils, easy to do. Let's move on. Let's talk about those shifters from Tim Holtz. This is a shifter stencil. What does this do? Well. It does a honeycomb pattern, but you can see that there's a line of honeycomb here, a line of honeycomb here, and a line here where there is a uh, blocked out space here where you can't stencil. The reason that that is, is because they have very gently lasered that little pattern, that honeycomb pattern, I don't know if I can get it for you, that honeycomb pattern here. This is a stencil that lets you move it along and line it up so you can do multiple colors. You're like, I don't get it, Stacy. I know, let's, let's do one and that way I can show you what I'm talking about. And again, I am sure that there are lots of YouTubes on this. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna take it and put it right down on my sticky grid I got my fingernails on, my fingers all over that. I'm gonna take my Tim Holtz shifter. Not all of his stencils are shifters. In fact, there's only nine stencils that are shifters, and then there are three different sets of mini shifters. So, these are the mini ones. This is the full size. The nine shifters that are big like this are what you will find smaller in the minis. So if there's, maybe there's three, four of the minis. So here's the exact same stencil, the large version and the mini version. The minis come with three stencils each versus one of the large, but 
they don't, there's no new designs in the mini. They just took the existing shifters and shrunk them down into a mini size. So let's put this on here. And I don't know, let's go there. So I think I want to do kind of a guy looking, a guy looking stencil. So I'm going to take a little bit of my gray and I've got it all pressed down so nothing's going to move. And I'm going to put a little bit of my gray and I'm going to start stenciling right in, right into my honeycomb with a little bit of my gray. Now I'm going to do just this first row. And I'm not going to do the whole thing in gray. I'm going to leave empty space. Well, I'm hoping I don't pull it up too much. Nope, I moved it. All right, but I'll layer it back down. Okay, so that's where I'm at. I just did one row. That's all I did. So I'm going to lay it back down, push it back down, and then I'm going to take my next color. And I think my next color is going to be maybe a teal. Maybe a teal. And I'm going to put that and kind of blend that on in. Oh yeah, I didn't line it up right, but that's okay. Then I might take one more color, or maybe, a, yeah, maybe I'll take one more color, kind of my brown, and layer that on top of that. So I'm making a kind of a masculine blend. Okay, so I've got a little bit of a masculine blend going on there. Now, the idea is that you can pick this up and move it. So now I've got this solid bit of stencil, but it has the it has the honeycomb outline on it. So then I can lay that over what I've already got going and change up my colors because now I can I can you see how it will line up those little lines will line up and now if I wanted to, on my next row, I could change my colors up a little bit because where it's blocked off, it's acting as a mask. So now it's not going to let me stencil there. So this time let's do, um, let's do a little bit more brown and go in here and add a little bit more brown. So it really lets you have, um, have an experiment with different color combinations. And it really gives you an opportunity to take your paper and, and see what more it could be. And really playing with it is probably the easiest way. And I'm just going to add a little bit of blue, just a little bit of blue. And then maybe I'll add a little bit of dark blue. Oh, I can use my same blue. A little bit of dark blue. Just a little bit. And then I could come back with my brown and kind of blend all of those into each other. And even if I wanted to, I could hit it with just a little bit of gray. I don't know if I'm going to like it, but we'll do it. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to like it, but we'll do it. Just never know what you're going to get. Okay, 
So now, here's my first row that's been hidden. Here's my second row. And when I take my stencil off, oh yeah, that looks good, huh? And then I can take my stencil and move it along and do a whole, a whole nother row in whatever color combinations make my heart happy. It really is up to you because the stencil has a built-in masking element to it. And that's why they're called shifters, because you can shift back and forth. And not all stencils have this extra masking element. Um, Tim Holtz really thought about that when he developed these. And Stampers Anonymous, when they manufactured them, they really put that together so that it makes, it makes sense. And again, you can change your colors. I could now be adding some orange. What if I wanted to change it up a little bit? and add a little bit of orange because I want to do a gradation on my card. You've got that opportunity with these. And talk about great for making your background, especially when you don't have that right paper, you don't have that perfect paper. And I think I'll take a little bit of my brown. Boy, I'm terrible. I use the wrong ones for the wrong ones all the time. Maybe throw a little bit of brown in there just to tone it. And then, crazy me, a little bit of gray. Again, just to tone it. When I mean tone it, I mean trying to keep a little bit of consistency. All right, who knows what we're going to get? Time will tell. Ready? Okay, that looks, I mean, that really is very amazing. It truly is, and I could just keep going. And I could, I could shift this way on this side and use the colors, I could use the colors that I did here over here so that it balances it out a little bit. But what a, what a wonderful concept for a stamp or a, a stencil to have a built-in masking element to give you opportunity to move and you can just keep going. Now I could change the whole look of this by doing pretty colors. If I used girly colors, pinks and yellows and it would change the entire look of this whole card or if I used metallics, it would change this whole look of the card, but that is what a shifters does. And it doesn't make a difference if you use the, I'm gonna use a different one. Here's the, the mini one. I'm gonna cut this down just a little bit. Here's the mini. There's my shifter right on top. And what if I just did the one color. What if I just chose to do one color? So I'm just going to put yellow all the way around. I'm going to have the yellow in different intensities because I'm not really going back and making sure it's all the same saturation. I want that different saturation. I want some of the yellows to be a little bit darker and a little bit lighter. That's what gives the depth when you're looking at something. Okay, so I've got my yellow all the way around. That's the only color I used was yellow. Now I could pick up my shifter and I could move it so that that yellow is covered up. By the little, by the little preset uh, masks that are inside the stencil. And then let's grab and let's do and again, this time I'm just going to go all the way around. Okay. 
all the way around. Two colors. Okay, that's where I'm at. Let's see what we get. I could, and my sticky grid's still sticking. <laughs> I could trim it out. Ta-da! That is what a shifters does. And yes, if you wanna look at other YouTubes using them, um, there are absolutely more out there, but I didn't want to not show it just in case you don't um, necessarily go look at, at all the YouTubes that have to do with stenciling because maybe it wasn't something you thought you were interested in until you just saw how easy it is to do and what it can do for you. I mean, totally different looks. But I could have this look with this stencil and I could have this look with this stencil. It's just a matter of how you blend your inks. And I just used inks I had. I don't want you to feel you have to run out and go buy anything special. Try what you've got first. Pretty darn cool though, right? <laughs> love that. Love these. Oh my gosh, love this. Are you seeing how much more you can do with a stencil? But we're not done. No, we're not done yet. Um, where am I gonna move to? Oh, I'm gonna do this one. Okay, next one, here. Oh, okay, now we're gonna move to black paper because I am gonna bring out the Yosotomo paints. There's 24 metallic watercolor paints in here. These are not typically sold in a paper crafting scrapbook card making store. They are $8.10 for the whole thing. And then they're on sale 20% off. Oh my gosh. Okay, so I've got mine over here, right here. And I will tell you, the easiest way to use them is to take a mini mister. I don't want it on me. Well, that's okay. Take a mini mister and you're going to spritz right over the whole thing. Just do the whole tray. Even if it's colors you're not going to use, just spritz. Now don't saturate. There's a difference between spritzing and having a pool of water. What can you do with these? You can paint with them. You can stencil with them. You, I mean, and the price, this is where the, the, if you wanted three stencils and this, this is where your 20 bucks yet is gonna go a really long way. Can you imagine having all of these metallic watercolor paints for, let's see, $8.10, that would be, um, you know, 80, what, 81 cents? So uh, $1.62 off, that's a great, I mean, that's a, that's a great value. But I wanna use another Prima stencil and this time, this time I'm gonna use I'm gonna use black. Okay. Still got my sticky grid. Haven't turned it over yet. And it's still sticking. Then I take my stencil and go over the top. Maybe you don't wanna do white paper. Maybe you wanna do black paper. Best way to use these with a stencil is with a stencil brush. This is by Sukaniko. It's got a firm bristle to it. You don't have to use one that's this fat. You can use one a little bit thinner, um, but a stencil brush is the easiest way and they're very inexpensive. A couple dollars at most will get you a stencil brush. You may already have, Dreamweavers has stencil brushes. You may already have one. Now, the thing about the paint is that less is more. Like I said, with the water, you may have to go back and spritz it a few times as it's drying out, but you'd rather oh, you know, spritz it when you need it than over spritz it. And the first time you're getting them out to use them each time, you wanna give a good spritz and then leave it sit for a few minutes because you want that water to start activating, making almost like a paste and they're beautiful. All right, so I'm gonna dig in here. And I don't know if you can see, but my stencil brush put a little texture on that color. 
And if I needed it a little more wet, I would just spritz again. You want to keep them wet. You don't want to keep them overly saturated because with a stencil, you don't want the water to seep underneath. Now, because you've got it down with a sticky grid, it doesn't really do that very often. But I'm going to go in there and I'm going to pick some up and then I'm just going to go right over. And I'm just going to put some of this kind of everywhere. No rhyme, no reason. And you can see I'm just blending it in. Now, maybe I want to go to my next color. And maybe I like this color. I'm going to pick some up. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to add that. A little bit of here, a little bit of there. Now, if I want to wash out my stencil brush, if I want to brush that off because I want to go into a totally different color, just use a baby wipe. And now maybe I go into my blue. So I've got a little bit on there. And if I think that I need it to be more wet, I take my spritzer and I spritz, less is more. You don't want to psh, 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 until you see a pool of water. You're trying to avoid that. You just want it wet enough so that your stencil brush can pick it up. Now, if I was painting with it, would I want it wetter? Yeah, then I'd go in there and psh, psh, psh. if I was going to use a paintbrush and pick it up with a paintbrush, then I'd go psh, psh, psh. Sound effects required to make it um, more like a paint. I need this to be more like a paste than a paint when I'm using it with my stencils. What do you think? You think we're good? Think we're good? Maybe a little bit of gold just to... All right, let's see what we've got. Okay, this is where I'm at. Doesn't look like much. But that's where I finished. So pretty. And it has got that beautiful metallic. Oh my gosh, right? And you can't go wrong. You just can't go wrong. You grab, how many, how many sheets of black paper do you own? Put my sticky grid back down because it's still sticking. Put my paper down. Put my stencil down. And just go to town. In the colors that make your heart happy. Maybe you like this really vibrant green. And the more you put on, the deeper that color is. Maybe you love this vibrant green. And because it's a paste, it picks up with my stencil brush super easy. And then let's do that blue again. Or maybe we do this blue. Nope, need a little bit more spritz. Not quite pasty enough. Okay, so let's do the coppery color, huh? Oh, <laughs> look at that. That's a little bit of happiness. A little bit of coppery color here. And then maybe we'll go back and do the blue. Now I didn't wash my brush. That's because I'm just gonna pick it right back up. Go in there and maybe I can get a little bit of this blue. Oh, love, love, love the pasty. Maybe back to that green. I have no idea what we're going to get, but time will tell. Oh, I missed it right there. Can I get a little bit right there? Okay, let's pick it up. That's where I'm at. But that's where I finished. 
Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, right? It's beautiful and you made your own backgrounds and they're different and you used something that is so totally affordable. And again, this has a tremendous amount of uses as well. I could paint with them. I don't want to throw these away. These are now those are going to go downstairs and we're going to make something out of them. I could if I chose to I don't know. Let's Let's see what happens. Well, let's try this. I don't know. We're going to try. So I'm going to put that down. Get it down. I'm going to come in here with my paintbrush this time as opposed to using. So you got to be careful with the water when you're using a stencil. You don't want too much water because it'll seep underneath. But what if I went in and I picked up some of this color? And I just, yeah, I think I have too much water. And I just painted with it. What if I did that? It could be pretty. We'll have to see if I have too much water. Time will tell. And I'm blending my colors. And I'm just overlapping. I don't think I'm going to get as good of detail, but I, I could be wrong. I've been known to be wrong. Don't tell Mr. SMS I said that. <laughs> I'll never hear the end of it. <laughs> you are sworn to secrecy. <laughs> oh yeah, I got too much under there. Okay, well, we can try. Yeah, I think with a stencil, yep, nope. Okay. Paintbrush and stencil. Well, if you like the look, it's fine. But if you're more on a precise, you want it to look like what it's supposed to look like, then I think the stencil brush is going to go better. But if you just wanted to paint with it, what if you just wanted to paint with it and then die cut your flowers out of it or make a stunning background? Look at how beautiful if you just want to paint. Look at how lovely it is just to paint because it is a watercolor and that paint will blend so you can mix your colors. Look at how pretty. If all you want to do is paint. So you have lots and lots of options, beautiful options with them. Will it go on white? Yes, absolutely, you can do white. It will go on white. Let's grab a piece of white really quick. And let's bring it on back. Oh, I bet I put it backwards. Oh, well. And let's don't dip it in water. Oh, did you almost see that? Holy smokes, artichokes. Okay, let's start with my gold. And let's get some gold in there. And then let's get some. I want to dip it in water because my water's sitting right there. Nope, not misty enough. Get a little bit of water in there. In fact, we'll spritz the whole thing because it's drying up. So as it dries up, Have 
no idea what color because I'm I'm not cleaning my brush so I may just make a little bit of mud I'm okay with a little bit of mud you just never know what it's gonna come out and since you're only using white paper it is not the end of the world if you do not love 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 it all right let's see what we've got I want that blue probably mud could be very pretty mud though let's see oh very masculine oh see I did I had it the wrong side so I didn't clean I did it on this side when the last way I did it was on this side so some of it transferred but it looks still pretty good a little distressed let's go with a little distressed but can you see the iridescence can you see the metallic oh this one I did earlier can you see the iridescence can you see the metallic even on the white you have options and this is a great guy color this is good this is just pretty and that was yellow and blue and red and they blended together so and look at as it dries look at how fabulous the color is look at how beautiful that is and that's using it as a paint and then when you're done you just close it up and it dries that's it that's all you have to do is close it up and you can see that I was digging in there pretty good and there's lots of paint in there for you to use it just so happens that this isn't necessarily something you would find in a typical scrapbooking store or card making store therefore the price is kept reasonable unbelievable okay so what have we done we've been and I'm still working on my same sticky grid I haven't even turned it over yet and it's still sticking <laughs> so we have done a watermark we've done basic stenciling we've done basic stenciling with color blending colors we've done the tim oh we did oh did i get away we did oh there's a really good one we did our our pretty layering stencils so pretty we did our tim holtz shifters that are easy to do we have played with the Yasutomo beautiful metallic watercolors that are at a price that I really I, I can't stress enough what a good deal that is if you're on a budget this is a really really great way to go to get watercolors in a metallic that will go on the white will go on the black will let you paint will let you stencil I really couldn't believe the price when I got them I was really shocked I was ready for a whole lot more especially after knowing what I saw and how they did it I, I to be able to I guess they call it a hack or whatever for so much less made my heart so happy and they did they did stenciling and they used the metallics and and it was beautiful but my gosh when I found out how much the materials were that they used I literally went oh! <laughs> and then I thought no we can do this for less last thing I want to show you is your free gift so free gifts letters from Prima so the reason why we've got them is because they're not sticking to the liner does that mean they don't stick anymore yeah they still stick we have them in a bunch of different colors you're going to get whatever color you get and you they're free so you don't pitch a fit but what if you yes I just said you don't pitch a fit they're free <laughs> yes I did <laughs> you get what you get and you don't pitch a fit that's what I tell my children and my children are are young adults now and they still hear you get what you get and you don't pitch a fit so the thing about them is that you can change them I took a few of the letters and let me see oh let me see if I can even pull one out there's my sticky grid I took a few of the letters the numbers so even though they don't necessarily stick on the liner anymore they absolutely still have sticky to them without question you'll be able to use them without any problem on your layouts they're still very sticky 
and you have an option. You can paint on them with your Yasutomo. I know I'm going to say that wrong, and I'm apologizing in advance. You can absolutely paint on top of them and change your color. If you want a metallic look, there. I just made a metallic number seven. I think I have a metallic number three somewhere. Or if you would prefer, you can take your ink and ink them. And now I have a blue or a teal number five. They don't have to stay the color they come in. You can alter them. They are a canvas, so they absorb the ink and the paint beautifully. It's not gonna just wipe right off because it is a canvas. And they are free. Doesn't matter if you buy any of this. If you just buy a roll of Stacy tape, you're gonna get them as long as you're buying it during the, uh, the, for the, while this YouTube Yummy sale is still going on. So the first week this YouTube comes out. All right. So we did a lot today. I hope you saw things that maybe you didn't see before or you didn't know before. Now you see what more Versamark can do for you because it really can do some beautiful things. I have lots of samples to show you and lots of product. So let's start quickly with the product. Um, the stencils from Prima that are 40% off. I think there's 18 or 19 of them. This one's $5, it's gonna be 40% off. This one's $4, and then it's gonna be 40% off. So I think all the layering stencils are $4. That's the one I used today, four bucks, and then 40% off. This one I used today, four bucks, and then 40% off. How beautiful is this one? Four bucks and 40% off. Then we have another, we have a $6 stencil. We have the, the doily, which is at $6 and then 40% off. Here's a double layering. So you've got a rose and you've got a butterfly. This one's $6, but 40% off. So that would be $2.40 off of the $6. Here we've got another double layering. Oh, I'm gonna sneeze. Such pretty, pretty things. All of these are, and that's what we used to do that card. That's the stencil. All of these beautiful, oh and this is the stencil <laughs> we used to do that card. And this is the stencil that I used today. $6 less 40%. This doily's $5 less 40%. This one's $5 less 40%. Oh my gosh, this one's beautiful. The damask background, $5 less 40%. The cute little teardrop, which we used on one of those cards, five bucks 40%. And then the, the circles that I did with the, with the um, Versamark is also $5 less 40%. The stencils are at an amazing deal and at a price where you're not worried about, oh my gosh, if I, can't, if I don't like it, what am I gonna end up doing with it? So you make a per any purchase and every order just gets one. You don't get one per item, it's one per order. So that's that. Then we have the Tim Holtz stencils. These are a little bit more, um, but they're 20% off. So we have the I Want It All bundle, which gives you all of his, all of his, um, his slider stencils, including the sets of the minis. Gives you all of them for $69.50, regularly $86. Or we have them in open stock. If you just like one or two of them, you pick the ones that make your heart happy they're, look at 
for that one, less 20%. 599, less 20%. They're, they're just, they're, they're unique. That's the one I used in the mini. Very unique. And give you lots of options if you like to play with color or you like to have dimension and texture. And then the minis are 10.99, but you get three small stencils in there. Okay, then we have the Yasutomo, Yasumoto. I'm sorry, I know it's Yasumoto. I'm sorry. <laughs> I can already hear them going. Okay, it's Yasumoto. No, it's Yasutomo. Oh my gosh, is it tomato? Is it tomato? I just don't know. Holy smokes, artichokes. It's great product. Yasutomo. Yasutomo. Here are their watercolors. <laughs> $8.10 less 20% off. Amazing. Great gift. Great gift. So if you think you might want to get some things for Christmas for crafty friends, great gift. Amazing. All right, then we have sticky grids from Sizzix. Two sizes, five sheets each. They also are on sale. And then last but not least, we brought back my stamps. So my exclusive um, Arc on Wild and Friends Inky Antics stamp sets that I used in a previous YouTube. Why did I bring them back? Well, because you're gonna see a lot of samples made with them. <laughs> So these are also on a YouTube yummy and there is a whole nother YouTube with just these stamps in them and they are beautiful when you use them on your envelopes. It was just two weeks ago I think that we used them. Okay samples. Let's start with the Prima. So there's that one stencil. Isn't that gorgeous? That's that layering stencil that's like four bucks and then 40% off. And here's the stencil that I used. And this time we used it with the, okay, how do you say it again? Yasutomo, the Yasutomo inks, the watercolor paints. Oh my gosh, and look at how beautiful is that? Also done with a Prima stencil. When you open it, oh Claire, there's nothing on the inside. Claire made this, didn't she do a cute job? Isn't that darling? And here we've got the watermark on the back and the damask on the front. Oh my gosh, this is gorgeous. I don't know who made this one. That's, can you see that? That is beautiful. Oh my goodness gracious. Because that, that rich copper pops. I don't know if the camera's picking it up or not, but holy smokes artichokes. That is gorgeous. Then we have another layering. And then we have a background and these were all done with Prima. Look at how soft and sweet that background is. And then of course we have the three that we did for the in-store make and take. One, two, Three. Next, we have samples using the Tim Holtz shifters. Are you ready for those? So this one was using that honeycomb and we used the, the Yasutomo to get the metallic -y look in the different colors. And we colored the letters. Those are the letters that you're gonna get for free and we took it and we colored them. Then, the background is done with the Tim Holtz shifters and the stamps are my stamps, are the exclusive Scrapbooking Made Simple stamps by Inky Antics and Art Gone Wild and Friends. And again, the background was done using the Tim Holtz shifters stencils and then everything else is my exclusive product. That was done for me by Arkham Wild and Friends. Again, a shifters for the background, and then everything else is out of my stamp sets that were done for me. 
the background. So it's a way to have a stamped image, what looks like a stamped image, with the different colors. But you can't do that with a stamp. You can't get those different colors unless you have multiple stamps so that you can um, move them around to get all the different lines. Oh, this is so pretty! Again, the background was done with the Tim Holtz stencils and everything else, the butterflies, the sentiments are all done with my sets. And then last, but no, oh, no, there's two more. Again, my set, Tim's set. <laughs> Tim and Stacy. <laughs> A happy little combination on some of these, right? <laughs> Who would have ever thunk? So pretty. All right, you guys. I'm going to tilt on up. I'm going to back up. Whoop. Okay. So I hope you learned something today. I hope you saw something maybe you hadn't seen before. I hope you let your mind kind of go and, and imagine all the creative things you can do with a tool called a stencil. They are affordable. They are, they have longevity. They have multi-faceted uses with different inks and mediums. And if you give yourself a little opportunity to just sit there and grab some white paper and some black paper and whatever inks you already own, give yourself the chance to play and be creative. And don't be upset if it looks like mud, no. Finish what you start. If you make a background, do something with it because I guarantee you, when you're all done with it, it's going to look beautiful. We are so critical of ourselves. Oh, I'm not gonna like that. And you put it aside. Finish what you start and give yourself the opportunity to see just how creative you really were and didn't know. You can do this. I, I believe in you. So. Because if I can do it, you can do it. And I know you don't believe this, but I am not a crafty person. I'm a technique girl. <laughs> all right, you guys, where are you going to find all of this great product? At scrapbookingmadesimple.com. You may be able to find the shifters at your local, um, at your local independent retailer. And if you can, go shop with them first for the shifters. Absolutely. I don't think you're going to find the Prima stencils there. And I don't think you're going to find the... So I'm going to be in so much trouble over this. Sumi, Sumitomo, yeah, the, 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 the metallic watercolor inks. They're going to kill me. I know that. Wait a minute. The, is that better? <laughs> does that, does that get me out of the doghouse? <laughs> Yasumoto. <laughs> the Yasumoto watercolors. <laughs> Hoping that gets me out of the doghouse. <laughs> all right, you guys, you're going to find them all at Scrapbooking Made Simple, scrapbookingmadesimple.com. Come see us in our retail store. Um, otherwise, we will see you online, and I will see you next week for the next do's and don'ts of the Sizzix Big Shot machine. And I've got a uh, Sizzix Big Shot, a Big Shot Plus, and an Express machine to play with. All right, you guys, I will talk to you then. Bye! <laughs>